So now let's implement this logic with the help of Java. Now, the thing is, first we need a array, right? So let's create an array here. So I will say int arr, and this will have certain values. So let's have some values here. We'll say three, five, one, four, six, two. So we got these values here. And let's apply the sorting techniques on this. So before sorting, I will print some values. I'll say for in n in array and let's print these values so i will say print n but i will also make sure that i will put a space i will not print on new line and once it is done i'll print on print a new line and then after sorting also so i will say this i will just write it here after sorting so here let's let's do the same thing and let's say after sorting it should print some value but at this point if you run this code let's run this and you can see in the output, they both are unsorted. So because that's why we have to do some sorting here, right? So let's apply the sorting logic. So what I will do is I will simply call a merge sort method, which will basically accept three values, the ARR, the L, now L here is zero. And then you have to also pass the array dot length minus one. Basically you have to pass the R value as well. Remember we have to pass three variables. Now, since we don't have this method, I will simply say more action, create this method, and you can see we got this method here. And let me just put this method not here, but on top. Now this is where the actual logic is going to happen. So you can see we got two variables. This should be L and this should be R. So left and right. Okay. Now as for the logic, if you can see in our logic, we have already mentioned this logic. So basically what we have to do is we have to first check if the L value is less than R, then only you do certain things. And what are the things you have to do? Basically, you have to find the middle value. So I will say int mid is equal to L plus R divided by 2. And then you have to call merge sort two times. Again, I'm just going with the logic which I've written in the code or in the board here. So you have to pass ARR and then you have to pass the L and then you have to pass mid. That's how you create two different arrays. So mid plus 1 and R. Okay, and then you will simply say merge. Of course, right after doing the sorting, after breaking it down, you have to also merge. But while doing merge, you have to pass three values. ARR, uh, you have to pass the left, mid, and right. You have to pass these three values. So this is the only logic you have to write inside merge sort method. But then we have to also complete merging because dividing is very easy. This is how basically you are dividing the values. The difficult part is merging them. So let's implement merge here. So I will just go back here, more actions, uh, create a method merge. Yes, so I got a method. At this point, they are private methods is because I'm going to call from the same class, but depending upon your requirement, you can just change them. And now the actual logic goes here, the merge. Okay, now as I mentioned, you need to create two arrays here, right? So if you can see the logic, we need two arrays. Let's name this as LRR, which is the left array. And this will be an array. But the question is, what will be size of it? Because when I create this array, I have to mention the size. I don't know what is the size here. Now, based on when it is getting called, it will be different size. But the question is how we are going to know the size. And that's where this L, M, all this thing comes or L, uh, R comes into picture. So let's use that and let's get the size. So if you want the size of the first array, the first section, basically you can simply say mid minus L because for the first array, it starts with L. If you can see here, it starts with L and ends with mid. So if you say mid minus L, you will get the length, right? But the problem is since this is zero indexing, we have to also add plus one because mid is not representing the size of the array. It represents the index value. So you have to say plus one. Then you will get the second array length with the help of R minus mid. So we'll just put some space here so that it will be much more visible. Okay, so you can see we got these two values and this is the size you have to mention here. The first array will be of size N1, the second array will be of size N2. That's done. The next step is actually to copy the values. If you can see, we are mentioning the copy values here, right in the, in the notes. Now, how do you copy value? We can use a for loop and let's use two different variables. I will say X and Y this time. X is equal to zero and depending on the size of the array. So for the first array, the size is N1 and X plus plus. Not used to using X and Y inside a for loop, but let's try. 
So how do you copy? So A R R this values which is X. Now how will you get the values? So from A R R from the main array we have to start from the left. So you have to say left plus X. That's how you get the values. So whatever value of the L is. Example if you look at here uh, for the first array the index is 0 1 2 but let's say if you're merging the second array this one the index value is 3 4 5 right so whatever value of l is which is the left which is 3 in this case it is 3 plus x that's how you will copy and none so this is for the first one let's do the same thing but your different uh, values so i will just copy this for the second array okay we can also use x here no problem we can say n2 and this will go into the right array but the question is what will be the value here now any guess so when you say on the right hand side it is your mid plus one because we are not considering the mid value for the next example if you go up the mid here was two but we started with three so you have to say two plus one mid plus one so that you will get three okay so we copied was the next step and now the actual work starts of merging and already mentioned we need two variables one is i equal to zero uh, we also need j for the second array. So first array will be counted with i and second array will be, handling, will be handled by j. But we also need one more counter which will represent the main array, right? And this value will start with l because we have to start from the left hand side. Now once we get these three values, let's start merging them. So we have to do multiple times, right? When you say merge, you have to take my value from here. Example, when we were doing this, we would compare the first two values, compare the next two values. That's how we were doing, right? So when to end this? If your i value is less than n1 and not this and, and j value is less than n2, we'll, co we'll continue till this point. If they are not true, then we'll have to stop because that means we have to, we have actually reached the end. But now question arise, how will you merge? And that's where you have to start comparing values. Now, when you say compare, what it means? Compare five and one. So basically the first element of this array and the first element of this array, let's compare them. How will you do that? So we'll simply check if the L array of I, because that's what is representing the L array, which is the I variable. If it is less than, and we can also say equal to, what if they're equal? Then we have to compare this with the R array of J if the left one is smaller, in this case, the other one is smaller, not the left one. But let's say if the left, left one is smaller, in that case, you will put that into the main array. So array k is equal to L array, not length, L array of i. Now, since we have used, so let's say this was a smaller value. And once we have used this, we have to cancel this, right? I mean, this is done. So we can shift our pointer to the next, ele next element. How do you shift your, not the pointer, but the reference? You will simply say i plus plus here in this case. But what if it is not same or not is what if it is not true? In that case, you will go to else part. You will do the same thing, but not with the left array. You will this time you will do with the right array and then the j variable and you will say j plus plus. And every time you run this loop, because see, after one iteration of this loop, basically you will get the first value of the array, right? Main array. You will simply say k plus plus because you have to also increment this. So once i is done, because k is here, once I, once i is done, you have to move k here. Okay, and that's why we're doing k plus plus. And that's it. This is your merge sort. Let's see if that works. Let's refresh this. I'll just rerun and we got an error. Something went wrong. You can see everything was going well, but this four is not at the right place. We got one there. Because sometimes what may happen is, when you're copying two arrays, what if the values are left in one of the array? Example, if you look at our example, when we were copying this, remember when we were completing the entire task, these two elements were remaining from the first array, which goes at the end. So that thing is not covered yet. So what you do is, for the remaining elements of the particular array, you will again run a while loop here. So we will say, if I is still not equal to, or still not less than n1 you will simply copy the remaining elements whatever is left because after this loop at least one array will be ended okay so we have to work for the second of uh, the remaining ele element of one of the array maybe left hand side or right hand side first we'll try to understand left hand side let's see what happens on the left hand side simply copy all the values so you will say arr of k is equal to we have to copy from the left array and let's use i here now every time you do this you you will increment both the elements i and k both so this is what the left hand side left out left out values the same thing should be done for the right hand side so this time i will say j is less than n2 in that case you will copy 
but not from the right uh, left hand side you will do it from the right hand side the variable is j and the increment you will do for j plus plus okay and let's run this and you can see now it is sorted and now it doesn't matter what values you have let's say let's take the values which we have written on the board which was eight what was the value eight five nine one six seven and if you run this you can see we got sorted values let's add some more values here just to remove the confusion with different values let's say 111 this is 57 and now let's see 6 7 8 9 57 75 111 so this is your merge sort so the steps basically you have to first do the breakdown of you have to break the array down into small chunks and then you have to also merge them the only thing you have to remember is when we were drawing this we were going in two sections right something like this we were saying okay we will create two different uh, section and then First section will break into two parts and second section will break into two parts. No, that's not how it is working. If you observe, what it will do is, it will break down the entire section into two parts, yes, but then first only you will get the first part. Then you, you're not going to the second part, okay? You're not looking at here. You, this is not there yet. You're still into the first part. Then this will divide into a section. You will get this 8, 5. Then you're dividing into two sections, which you will get 8, 5. And then you will merge them. Then you will start break, breaking down the second part, which is 9. Okay, 9 was still not there. Then once this is also merged, once you get this, it will start working on the next part. Then it will work on this, it will work on this, this, merge, and merge. I mean, sorry, break down, then you get 7, then you merge this two. And then once you have merged, then it will go for the next two. So it's not exactly breaking down the entire section equally. It's basically going from left to right. So yeah, that's how things are working out. And this is your merge sort with the help of Java code. And I hope this makes sense. Let me know in the comment section. See you in the next video.